Dr. Bataille, we hear that nowadays eczema is becoming more common. Is that the reality? Yeah, I think over the last 10 or 20 years, we've noticed that all the allergic disorders, so hay fever, or rhinitis, asthma, and eczema are becoming much more common. Uh, it tends to be more common in big cities. Um, and one of the theory about this increase is that we have become too clean. So eczema is m rarer in big families, lots of siblings, rarer in a farming environment, rarer if you have dogs at home. So we realize actually that the microbiome the baby is exposed to within the first few years of life is crucial. And what we've done, we've become a little bit too clean, we clean too much, we you know, have antibacterial on surfaces, so we don't allow the children to touch stuff that are a little bit too dirty. And by reducing the exposure to microbiome earlier in life, we make the children more susceptible to allergen later on. So I think it's one of the theory that um, um, eczema is becoming more common, yeah. So uh, short of moving to a farm and having mm. dogs around you, etc., mm. uh, what can you uh, advise when you have mums with, with small children and eczema? I think it's to be a little bit more aware that uh, children need to be exposed to, uh, you know, to common environmental bacteria earlier on in life. Most of the bacteria we have in our environment are fairly safe if you have common sense practice about, you know, be careful with meats and things like this. But, and allow kids to play with animals, to touch them, to play in a garden and handle soil and mm -hmm. you know so so maybe a bit le less protective but paradoxically and you can't blame the mum if the child suffer from eczema she'll be overprotective and she will tend to protect them a little bit more from the environment but in fact we should allow them to mm -hmm. interact with the environment more. Mm -hmm. And is eczema part of a, a some form of allergy or allergy type reaction of the body? So most children with eczema don't have specific <coughs> allergy to one allergen, but will be more receptive to everything that hits them. So for you and I, we wouldn't call it an allergen, it's a normal exposure, but for a, an eczema child that may be regarded as something that stimulates the immune system. So quite a lot of mums say, oh, you should do a lot of allergic tests in my child, but there is no useful test to do with a eczema, with, uh, sorry, with a child with eczema only if the mum reports a specific allergy. So mum will say, when I give them a, a bottle of milk within an hour, their face blow up and they have big lips and they're really looking very red, then you might act upon it. But overall, most children with eczema don't have a specific allergen. But it's considered as an allergic disease just because of the rapid reaction to the environment. And so hay fever, asthma and eczema all belong together. Mm. Okay, and uh, you tend to see children more than adults, small children or later on in life? So the, the peak time is usually a few months after birth. It's quite unusual as soon as the baby is born. Um, then a few months later the child might develop cradle cap, which is often the first sign of eczema tendency. Then it will start to go to the flexure, the, the, the fold in the arms and behind the knees. And then eventually children may have quite, you know, more widespread eczema on the body, but usually most eczema of childhood clear by the age of six or seven, maybe a little bit later. All right, so there's hope. Yeah. It, it goes, it gets yeah. better yeah. rather than getting worse. And in the meantime, uh, there are treatments? Yeah, so have. one of the things we see often is that um, mum are a little bit worried, mum and dad are a little bit worried about using topical corticosteroid. They think that it's highly dangerous for the child, but in fact, as dermatologists, we see more damage to the skin in the long term if the eczema has been undertreated rather than treated with corticosteroids. So corticosteroid in a short term as a cream has no danger to the child. It's not dangerous to the child at all. Mm -hmm. So I think the recommendation is, you know, use the product that are prescribed. If you think that your child is undertreated, go and ask for advice to have slightly stronger treatment uh, but there is absolutely no danger in using the treatment when needed mm -hmm. and th the advice is to use the treatment when your child is symptomatic it's itchy mm -hmm. it's scratching it's complaining and you can see a rash on the body mm -hmm. and uh, things to avoid things to avoid is washing your child too much because paradoxically parents will wash them very regularly and with a child with a bad eczema we say do it two or three times a week at the most because every time you wash your child, especially in a water like London and Greater London, you actually remove oil from the skin. So we do recommend to avoid washing too regularly, but if you do wash the child, then use um, some oil in a bath or some soap substitute, which are 
soap which do not foam, do not smell nice, but are much better for the skin. Mm -hmm. And which you can you can advise parents yeah. on, on yeah. the right uh, products Easily available uh, to use. Uh, from every pharmacy, over the counter. Yeah. So in conclusion, let's be a little bit more dirty. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Bataille. <laughs>